Hey, how's it going? The fine people at Toontrack are running their annual month-long event. It's Metal Month. I thought I'd put together a little demo for you today of Superior Drummer 3. I'm going to talk you a little bit through that at the end of the video, but I'm first going to do a demo now, ripping through one of my songs, Black Lotus from my album Never After, and we're going to see how Superior Drummer 3 stands up to the test. Let's go. So this is the Superior Drummer 3 VST. It's very, very beautiful to look at. Kind of give you a little bit of a, an insight into how I work. You've got all the drums here, so many to choose from. But I've only got the core library of SD3 and the Metal Machinery library loaded up at the moment, but that's enough for me to get great sounds. There's tons of other expansions, of course. I've based this kit on the Gent kit, I think it is. If you click here, you're gonna see all the different kits that are on offer. And under Metal Heavy Rock, lot to choose from. Gent style was a great starting point for me. So I would advise kind of the way I would do it when I get a new VST, kind of go through every preset, in fact, until you find a sound that's sort of similar to what you've got in your head. And that's a great starting point. The advantages of doing that rather than just right click on this kick here and you can change it to many different kicks, but you're gonna get kind of the raw sound rather than mixed already in context in the mixer which I will show you in a minute. It's a fantastic console, which is one of the big selling points, of course, of Superior Drummer 3 is it has basically, it's like a door within your door. It's, it's a whole recording studio within the VST itself. So basically my process with Superior Drummer when I first got it was to look through all the presets. There might have been mixing different presets. So some presets had a great snare, some had a great kick, and then you can go and look at the mixer and look at the processing that was done to create that sound. That's why just changing this to another drum, it might not sound the way it did in a different preset because a lot of processing has been done already in the mixer. Hearing them in context gives you a bit of a leg up rather than going through each individual snare, fine tuning the mix on those each time, which would be very time consuming. So once I was happy with the overall sound, the problem I had with the Gen kit was that the snare was quite narrow sounding. So I had to sort of widen that up a lot with reverb and uh, play with the compression because the compression can actually really make a snare sound quite narrow. With Gen, I think it's very common to just have that real slap, but at the same time you lose a lot of the spill over it's just this very narrow sound which didn't really work for the music i'm making which in this case is kind of progressive melodeath i suppose and in a similar vein i was listening out for which kit had the best kick which kit had the best toms which had the best cymbals and this is kind of an amalgam of all the different parts of the other kits that I liked, put it all together and then fine tune that in the mixing console itself. The great thing about Superior Drummer 3 is the ability to mix samples together. So this kick here that I'm using, which sounds like this, it is actually a mixture of four different kicks. You've got this nice sounding kick on its own, different sounding kick here, and you can change the level of each, right? So if you want less of this one, you can just turn it down here. You can also fine tune each kick. This one's been dropped a little bit. A lot quieter, I've got this other one, which is a bit flabby, if I turn that up. You wouldn't want that too loud in the mix when you want a real tight metal mix. But it does add a sense of the room to it, so that's on minus nine, and then we've got this, which really is doing most of the work. Beautiful sub to it. Mixed all together, get this incredible sounding kick. And you can fine tune the mix of each, uh, not just the microphone, but adding effects and stuff in the mixing console. Another really cool thing about this VST is the grooves tab. There's loads of MIDI already there. You can just hit play, sit back, and you can listen to the kit. You can flick through the different kits and you could just listen to the different beats instead of having to write your own drums to begin with. And this search bar here is super awesome. You can just search something like blast beats. You want to get some blast beats going. 
and it will just give you loads of different types of blast beats. Really helpful. Even cooler is the fact that you can just grab that straight on to the grid and you go in and it's there for you. And you can play around with that. So there's loads of like a library of MIDI, which is really helpful if you're just writing demos. It's a very quick way to do it. I typically like to just make the beats myself. But if you're in a hurry, that's a quick, awesome way to get around it. In here, you see that I open my MIDI in the piano roll. So I've got the big piano here. That's not the traditional way to do it. Most people like to open it in the drum map editor. I do so much orchestration and stuff, I guess. I like to see the notes on the piano roll. This makes more sense to my brain because I'm so used to doing orchestral stuff and piano stuff. This is what I was talking about with the drum map. A lot of my friends don't understand why I use the piano roll, but that's just the way I do things. Um, they much prefer to use this kind of notation, but that kind of uh, gives me a migraine to look at, to be honest with you. As you can see, this is the drum part I mapped out for Black Lotus. Now, I don't know how they've done it, but this VST sounds really realistic. It sounds very human, even without changing the velocities of each note, but I like to do that anyway. I like to create a bit more groove. So as you see the velocities here, especially for drum fills. Just a little subtle change in the velocities, of course, to keep it a bit more human, keep a groove going in there. Probably aim for around 120 for the kind of music I'm playing with the cymbals and the drums, the kick and the snare, always sort of hovering around 120 to keep things consistent as it needs to be with metal. We're creating a groove, we're creating a pattern, that's why you can see the velocity going up and down here, which creates a bit more of a human, groovy effect there. If I want to go the extra mile, I'll make the sound even more human, I can actually select some notes here, go down to rough quantize, put in, for example, seven, and then when I hit Q on the keyboard, it's going to quantize these out of time. They're currently snapped to the grid, it's sounding very robotic, I don't mind that, to be honest, for metal, I think it sounds good, but if I want to just add a little bit of uh, human error into the mix, you just hit Q and it just nudges the position slightly. I'll just show you again, just nudging them slightly out of time. And that basically just creates a bit more imperfection, which leads to a bit more realism. If you want to go even more overboard, we can take that same drum fill, put 30 ticks, hit Q. Okay, now you sound like you're drunk, but you get the picture. Probably stick around seven for this. Just enough to sound human, but still be in time. Now we can look at the mixer tab. Now this is where it gets a little bit overwhelming if you don't know how to use the VST and it's just trial and error practice. Really, you're just looking at the microphones for each drum or cymbal. And then over here, you're looking at the buses and then of course you've got the output there. Pretty much all the drum sound can be crafted within this console. It's really powerful, it's really awesome. So you've got the kick mics, snare top, snare bottom, hi-hats, all the toms, the overheads. You can obviously add effects onto these microphones as well, EQ it. Those microphones get sent to different buses. I like to have a bus for the kick, one for the snare, one for toms, one for cymbals, ambience. Now basically with the snare I'm sending all the snare mics, snare top, snare bottom, that's the bottom. Not much of that, but adding a bit more for realism. Both of those microphones are being sent to the snare bus. And then the snare bus itself is being sent to a snare reverb bus. And the reason I do that is because I want a bit more control over the reverb. I want to be able to control the level of the reverb here with a fader. And I also want to be able to EQ the reverb itself and cut out. We don't really necessarily want on the snare to have loads of low reverb. So I've just got the reverb affecting this area here. I can solo the snare bus here and just listen to the snare. Tons of cool effects here. That's what my EQ is doing on the snare. Nice big cut in the middle there. I think it was missing a bit here actually in the low mids. Give it a bit more of a thump. And then we've got the compression here. But as I said, too much compression on a snare for me is going to make it really narrow sounding. And I want to like open up that point, widen it up a bit more. I'm also using a punch exciter here, which is really awesome. I can actually crank this up a bit more. And again, that compression, if we put it all the way up, it's kind of killing it a little bit. So I don't want to have it too compressed. Now the tape simulator here is awesome as well. Adding some drive and some saturation to the sound of your snare drum. 
not too much. You don't want it to sound too distorted. A bit too much. <laughs> that extra reverb's helping widen it up. Along here, you get the opportunity to allow other microphones to bleed into other microphones, which is pretty cool. I tend to keep everything pretty isolated, so I'll have no other microphones bleeding into the kick mic. I want full control over that. Same with the snare and the toms. But with the overheads, I like to introduce a little bit of bleed from the other microphones just to create more of a sense of ambience and the togetherness that everything's been played in the same room. It adds a sense of realism as well to the production. Solo the overheads here. You can take the snare completely out of the overheads. You can introduce, obviously you wouldn't want that much snare, but you might want a little bit in there. You might want to take the kick out altogether. Really intuitive tool, really cool. Sound pretty good. Now I write a lot of music, and believe me when I say I would love to have 6-6 Samus sat in my closet at all times waiting for my beck and call to play live drums for me every single day. Believe me when I say we've had that conversation. But of course, financially speaking, that's never going to happen, and um, he has better things to do, right? So, But this is the beauty of Program Drums, and we're at a level now with Superior Drummer 3. It's just so good. Of course, on a final album release, I will always try to go with a real drummer, but there is no better psychic in the studio when writing music than Superior Drummer 3. The drums sound fantastic out of the box, and there's an extensive catalogue of expansion sample packs as well to increase your ever-growing library of drum samples because that's what we do. We love accumulating more drum sounds. Give me power. Give me more samples. We like to feel like gods in the studio and that's pretty much what this VST enables you to do. Feel like a god. I don't know how they've managed to make this VST sound so human. It's pretty much witchcraft. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that demo. Please check out Superior Drummer 3 if you haven't already. It changed my life. I'm sure it could change yours. I might be going a bit over the top, but no, I'm going to stick with that. Uh, I think I think it will change your life. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you on the next video.